begin to secure a rank on the stone. Several of Nigeria's people I know they have they know me. I think for them a transport of cor cordiality. cordiality. <coughs> but never met this fellow tender or alone, without a tighter breathing and support and zero at the bone. Alright, so I think it's useful to remember the question <coughs> that you should ask. These questions are at the back, but <coughs> we, let's just go out looking at the questions. Let's answer the, let's ask them. What are the basic questions you have to ask? What's the first one? Who's the speaker? All right, who's the speaker? Um, so let's answer it. And by the way, you should read a poem more than once. Um, so why don't you just do that? Do that again. Just read it one more time to yourself. <coughs> All right, so uh, let's ask that question again. What do we know about the speaker? Um, remember, we, we want to avoid making, thinking that the speaker and the, uh, and the poet are exactly the same. I think that's probably is her, but we, all, we also know that, you know, it's also a persona of herself. She doesn't really, when you, she becomes a writer, she becomes something other than just herself. You know, like you're a different person when you come to school than when you're at home with your family. It's, uh, to me, that's, that's part of it. So yes, it's probably her. Um, what do we know about her? Is it, uh, what does the poem tell us about her? Can you draw any conclusions about the speaker? <clears throat> Yes, she is not. She is not talking about herself. But my question is, what do you know about her from <clears throat> what she said? She knows nature's people. Very good. That's a really good answer. Um, she's familiar with nature, and, and she has seen this thing, whatever it is. Before, what do you think it is? animal, mineral, or vegetable? In other words, is it another person? Is it a thing? Is it a creature of some kind? Anybody? Is it a creature? But it, yes, but notice she calls him a fellow twice. So what if it's a creature, what is she doing? What does the word fellow say she's doing? Like what literary device is she using? Personification. Personification, which isn't unusual, but I think it is probably a creature. Um, any other suggestions as to what the poem is about? Like that's, it's about this narrow fellow. He's a narrow fellow. What else is he? You see anything else, Delaney? Any qualities of this narrow fellow? Have you ever seen a narrow fellow? If that was a human being. What would a narrow fellow look like? Didn't, what? Skinny. Yes, it doesn't say narrow-minded fellow. It's a literally narrow, so he's skinny, slim. 
Um, what else do you know of that? All right, boggy, you know what a boggy acre is? What is bog, what's a bog? Have you ever gone to Friendly Shopping Center, gone down, um, what's the name of that road, right down Spring? But anyway, there's a, there's a, there's a place where seniors usually go, people before the prom at our school, they often go down to this place and they get their picture taken. You ever been there? Do you know, across the street, have you ever crossed the street from there? You know what that's called? I think it, I thought it was called Bog Gardens. What's a bog? Flowers. Yes, but it's also, if you've noticed, there's a lot of water back there. It's like swampy, boggy means swampy, maybe wet. So this guy, whoever he is, likes that kind of that kind of atmosphere, that kind of environment. What else? Well, I think you're on the right track. <clears throat> Except what what can he do that alligators couldn't possibly do? Look at him. What does it do? What does he say he does? Page twenty nine. Where where is that? The first paragraph. He uh, and everybody occasionally rides. Hmm, that's interesting. He occasionally rides uh, in the grass. His notice sudden is, could an alligator scare you, sneak up on you? I mean, if you're in the swamp, maybe he could, if he's in the water, but I don't, I think it seems a little, that's a little too big for this thing. So what else could it be? Very low to the ground. A snake. Of course. Yeah. So it's probably a snake. So we got that out of the way. Who is the audience? We talked to speaker and the subject. Yes. Subject is snake. <laughs> Who is the audience? It, it, every uh, every poem has an audience, just like every poem has a speaker. But what do you know about the audience here? Who is always the audience? The people you and I, we're the audience. Um, but do you notice that he she speaks to the audience? You may have noticed him. That's line three. Um, she says it twice. Did you not? So in that third line of the poem, she uses the word you. So she's actually speaking to someone, and that may be just me and you, the reader, but she's actually speaking to the reader. Uh, we got three of the things. What's the occasion? Is there an occasion here, a setting? What is the setting? That's a better question. Here. So it doesn't sound like it's downtown wherever, Greensboro. It sounds like it's maybe a farm or somewhere else. Um, so yeah, that may, may be important. Okay, let's, uh, let me look at the questions. Um, the subject of the poem is never named. Um, and we talked about the imagery, the bog, the, the, the grass. Uh, the narrow, <coughs> all those indicate it probably is a snake. Who's the speaker? Um, the last two lines might be paraphrased without being frightened. Why is Dickinson wording more effective? My point is, what does she say about the snake? That's a that's a, another question you can answer. What does she think about snakes? Probably the same way I think about snakes. She like them? Like people as a pet? Some people like snakes. They, you know, particularly the big ones, the boa. Um, people, I think they're illegal. I hope so. We used to have a big boa. One of our science teachers at Page had one and he got loose. They found him. I don't know how long he was gone. 
But uh, I think, isn't that absurd? Why would somebody want to keep? Yeah, I don't mind turtles, but snakes, boa constrictors, why would you have, anyway. Um, how does she feel about them? She like them? She's never seen one. Are you sure? What do you mean she's never seen one? Why does she, several things uh, we need to, we'll close this. Um, notice that it unbraiding um, in the sun, you know, snakes. I was, my wife and I, it's been a couple years, but we were over at uh, the military park, you know, that uh, it, there's a path that runs from the Lewis Center and then it runs all the way up battleground and then it runs down old battleground to the battleground. You know that, that path? Mm -hmm. All right. It's not necessary that we know it, but. It is a bad. Uh, I, I took a picture of a snake that I bet it was long as, I bet it was six feet long. It wasn't a bow or anything, but it was the longest snake I've ever personally seen, and he was out. Oh, not even six feet. He was out sunning himself. It, so, you know, snakes do that. Um, tell me, you say she's afraid of the, the, tell me what does the poem mean? I, I think we said that that train poem, it was really nothing more than a train. But we're not dealing with a train here, we're dealing with a snake. Which, as a reader of literature, what should you always think of when a snake's involved? Um, if it's talking about a snake or like a What kind of person would be like a snake? Like evil and like wow. bad. Wow. Because snakes are scary and why are they scary? Because they bite people. Bats bite people. Because they Satan. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I go back to the snake thing. Yeah, dogs bite people, so why are we more afraid of snakes than your average dog? Like a dog most snakes wouldn't bite you. Most dogs won't bite you. You can but, tame a dog. You can't tame a snake. That's true. <laughs> Very good. What else is it about the movement of a snake <laughs> makes him <laughs> scary? Um, the way the snakes move and the way they're made, that makes them more scary than a dog. Can a dog come up and scare you? Can a dog surprise yes. you? Do you have German Shepherd, man? It's but like I mean, scary. If, but they're too big to really make that a habit. I mean, you know, they, you're gonna see them or hear them. What about a snake? It's tiny. They slither. I, I think that's snap. why we. I think that's why we're scared of snakes, because they're, actually jump. they're sneaky. They're sneaky creatures. They they can hide and be sneaky. Let me go back to Delaney. Why did you think of snakes? And you notice in, in this poem, he calls him a fellow. She calls him a fellow, which makes you think of a human. Um, anyway, um, good job with that. That's, that's kind of where we'll, we'll start. I want to do one more, and I'm going to ask you to do this one on your own. And these, are, these are a little bit harder. I'm going to pick out one here. Uh, that there's several. Can I stop for Deb? We did that one. Frigate, we did that one. Um, Buzz, laugh, and fellow. Let me just let me do one more. Um, well, let's just do the last one. Uh, a certain slant of life. This life. This is not easy. So what I want you to do is each of you to read it, um, and then you ask you ask those questions. Po poet, speaker, audience, setting, and uh, we'll we'll do one more before we leave. If we have time. Ladies, we do not have time. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs>
I know. I know. Really, no Please to that. keep your complaints to yourself about that. How is it? See? See what happens when you complain? Dang it, karma got me. Yep. That should be a lesson to all of us. Especially when you're, especially when you're talking ghost. about poetry. Her ghost came out of nowhere. He's a violent one. I'm looking at the schedule. I always wonder, usually we're here and they're we're trying to get in. Where are they? I was going to say, I think that the other one that's not in.